Oh. Certainly. Hello. Uh, my name is Dr. Mark Murphy. I'm one of the GPs here in the Department of General Practice in the Royal College of Surgeons. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can I ask, what's your name? Owen Smith. Okay. Mr. Smith, it's, I've been asked to examine your heart. Uh, that would involve uh, looking at you from the end of the bed and talking to the examiner and then uh, listening to your chest. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay. Are you in any discomfort or pain? No. Okay. If you are at all, please let me know. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm happy with the position at 45 degrees, and I'm happy with the exposure at the moment. So I'll move on to general inspection from the end of the bed. The patient, Mr. Smith, um, appears comfortable and well, and he's in no obvious distress from the end of the bed. Uh, the weight appears normal, and the color appears normal from the end of the bed. Uh, there are no visible pulsations in the pricordium, and, but there is a midline stenotomy scar visible from the end of the bed. I'll have a look at that later on. Uh, around the bedside, there are no cardiac devices or monitors, no drips, no medications, no oxygen or aids. I'll now move on to examination of the hand. Do you mind if I have a look at your hand? Oh. So I get you to lift them up like that. If you're in any pain, you can let me know. Okay, any, yeah. Are you sore at all? No. Okay, so, I'm going to firstly examine for clubbing. So I'm looking for a loss of nail angle and an increase in longitudinal curvature of the nail. But actually, that's not present. And there is no fluctuance of the nail bed. So there's no clubbing. I'm also looking for tar staining, fingertips, and peripheral cyanosis. And, and neither of those are present. There are also no splinter hemorrhages in the nail bed. I'll now look at the palmar surfaces of the hand. I'm now looking for palmar crease pallor. And I'm feeding for and looking for xanthomata of the tendon, uh, which aren't present. Thanks very much. Okay. I'll now move on to examination of the right radial pulse. So I'll examine this over 15 seconds. So the rate of the right radial pulse is 72 beats per minute, and the rhythm is regular. I will examine the character and volume at the right carotid pulse. Um, ideally, I would examine blood pressure at this stage in the cardiovascular examination. I'll now move on to examination of the face. So I'm just going to look at your eyes, if that's okay. Okay. There's no corneal arcus. Uh, do you mind if I press down on your eyes? There is no subconjunctival pallor. And on closer examination, there are a few small xanthalasma inframedially to both eyes. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to look at your mouth. That's okay. all right. So there is no peripheral cyanosis uh, of the lips. Can I get you to open your eyes wide and lift up your tongue? Thank you. And there is no central cyanosis under the tongue. Can you open your mouth? There's normal dentition. Thank you. I'll now move on to examination of the jugular venous pressure. Okay, can I get you to turn your head over to that side? That's fine, and just uh, relax your head back. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, so I will now uh, assess for a jugular venous pressure between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid. And I'm looking for a visible pulsation in this area, it's just present there, and it's not palpable. So I will now measure the height of the jugular venous pressure. And I do this by locating the manubrious sternal angle. And I will measure the vertical height in centimeter here by drawing a horizontal line from the JGT across. So just above the clavicle. 
the height of the JVP is approximately two centimeters. Less than three centimeters is normal. So the height of this JVP is normal. I'll now examine the right carotid Can I get you just to look straight ahead? Mr. Smith, thanks very much. So I'm just gonna put my finger just in your neck, that's okay. So I'm now moving medial to the sternocleidomastoid and I'm feeling for the carotid pulsation. And I'll assess this for 15 seconds. So the character and volume of the right carotid pulse is normal. I'll now move on to the examination of the pricordium. Uh, and I'll start with inspection. Um, again, there, there is a midline stenotomy scar. Um, there are no other scars in the pricordium and no other signs suggestive of an implanted pacemaker or an implanted cardiac defibrillator. And there are no visible pulsations in the pricordium. I'll move on to palpation. Starting in the left axilla, do you mind if I nope. examine your chest? Right. Okay. So I'm going to move my hand medially, and I'm feeling for the most infralateral pulsation in the pricordium with the tips of my fingers. And I can feel the apex beat, the most infralateral pulsation in the pricordium here. Locating that, I'll find the manubrious journal angle, which is the second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth space, intercostal space, and that's approximately uh, in the mid clavicular line. So that's the normally, that's the uh, apex beat is in the normal location. I'll now examine for a left parasternal heave. So examining for right ventricular hypertrophy. And there is no heave present. I'll now examine for a palpable murmur or a thrill in the four cardiac areas. The mitral, tricuspid, pulmonary, and aortic. Uh, I do not appreciate any thrills. I'll then move on to auscultation. And I'll, I'll time the murmur from the right radio pulse. I will listen to the four cardiac areas with the diaphragm first and then the bell. On auscultation, um, heart sounds one and two were audible and were normal. I did not hear any added sounds and I did not hear a murmur. However, um, I did not perform dynamic maneuvers. So I would, I would like to uh, assess those dynamic maneuvers to assess for murmurs further. And to complete the cardiovascular examination, I would like to auscultate the lung bases and I would also like to examine the ankles and the sacrum for edema. So um, I finished the heart examination. Thanks very much. Thanks.